Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners and I'm the co-founder of Eversound, a company dedicated to improving quality of life for older adults by giving them the gift of hearing. Today, I'm joined by Curtis Avison, Home Office Director of Life Enrichment at the Story Point Group. I've gotten to know Curtis over the last few years and just find his approach and his thought patterns for what he's doing within his communities is a breath of fresh air. Thanks for joining me today, Curtis. Yeah, thanks, Matt. I'm, I'm, I got to be honest, when we had this conversation about uh, you know getting on a call together, I was a little worried we were going to light the airwaves on fire with our energy. <laughs> uh, hey, we the jury's still out on that one, Curtis, but hey, we can see what we can make happen here. Hey, and I love it. Speak, and speaking about, you know, getting our energies and putting fire onto the airwaves, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so 16 years in senior living, ranging from executive director, uh, sales and marketing leader, regional operations leader, director of customer experience, uh, my current title, director of you know, home office, life enrichment. So, you know, for a story point group. So yeah, it's it's been a it's been a pretty amazing career so far. And I've I've just enjoyed the opportunity to serve seniors. I love it. 16 years. There's a lot of knowledge in there. And we'll definitely tap into a little bit of that. Um, but you mentioned the story point group. So can you share a little bit with us, like, you know, what they are, or who they are? Yeah. So I joined story point uh, eight years ago and we had 11 buildings going on 13 walking into 2020. We uh, were sitting at 20 buildings and I'll tell you, we've exploded over the past two years, uh, jumping up to a hundred communities. So really just an explosive company that just prides itself on resident experience, resident connections. Uh, some of the companies or some of the port properties in our portfolio would be Story Point, Independence Village properties that are in Indiana and Michigan, Leisure Living, Danbury. So, you know, just a lot of partnerships that have really just blossomed over the past couple of years. You know, you had mentioned in that, you know, as you're thinking about life enrichment and the resident experience, you know, what does the resident experience mean to you? Yeah. So... I love to hear people's answers for this because I think everybody comes up with some uh, some it's pretty interesting stuff. And so hopefully people, you know, take my take and think that there's something great, too. Uh, really, I believe the resident experience is helping the resident find the best version of themselves in their current state. So really, you know, Matt, this this happens by really finding ways to educate our staff through the training process and making it like cool or making it like making helping the staff find value in their interactions being something where they're trying to dig into the resident's heart, you know, trying to understand the resident and really just actively connecting with our residents through what we call meaningful connections. So people desire for connection and purpose never changes. Uh, sometimes they're buried and it, it, it's an opportunity for us to help find those things. So, I, you know, an example I often use is, uh, is a, is, a, is a housewife that was a, a great housewife and her husband was a chatty salesperson, you know, and uh, something happens to her spouse and she found her purpose in being that homemaker. And then all of a sudden, here we are 50 years later, something happens to her spouse and now her family's on some level urging her to come into our communities. And she, she doesn't really have a lot of, she hasn't really had to make a lot of friends in her life. You know, she hasn't actively tried to do that. Or maybe she has something going on and, and, and she's kind of self-isolating. And so when we talk about resident experience, it's really meeting them where they're at, really understanding who they are, and then building out from there for the experience that they're going to experience in, under our roof. Yeah, I love it. I think you make a great point of like meeting people where they are and just like allowing them to be the best version of themselves. It's, uh, you know, I think people could move into senior living to continue living, right? And it's just another chapter in their life. And, and having things like this is, is what it's all about. Um, and even just connecting with others, right? I think we're all looking for that on some level. And you had mentioned, you know, meaningful connection. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so it's it's a kind of a term we utilize in our organization, but it, it it's connecting with a resident so that they know that we're listening and we help them feel in that moment that they belong and that they matter. It's not just saying hi when you walk past them in the hallway and, you know, oh, hey, we're having cookies today. So here's a cookie that, you know, we're passing out. It's literally sitting down with a resident, spending time with them with an intentional effort to learn about them. You know, and when we, you know, I, I, let, I always talk about the fear people have when they're walking into senior living and, you know, they're not, a lot of people are not excited about this transition. And so 
if we think back about kind of where some of those fears come from when we're talking mid eighties and you know, that the opportunity to move into senior living was not the best opportunity, you know, assisted living really didn't exist up until the mid eighties. And so their opportunities to live in senior living were not the nicest communities on earth, you know, or maybe they were, you know, four people in an apartment, you know, I mean, like, like I'm thinking skilled nursing, you know, like in, in mm. just what has evolved and where their fears lie, it's such an opportunity. And, and we're starting to see more and more people come through the door that are actually looking forward to the move, but we're still kind of in that, we're stuck in that pattern of this is the end of the road. It's going to be terrible. I, this is going to be a nursing home that I put my parents into. And it, hey, man, a meaningful connection allows us to sit down with a resident, understand those fears, those concerns, understand what where their soul's at and kind of help draw something out of them that they never saw happening and really building a whole brand new chapter. I love it. And arguably maybe one of the best chapters too. I mean, um, and I know Story Point Group and you in particular are just really thinking about the resident experience differently. And I'm just, I know I've seen the TikToks and stuff, but I would love for you to share any just thoughts of how you guys are approaching it differently than the typical person or typical group out there. Uh, first off, I wanna say any programs that are doing it right out there, thank you. You know, I think that there are programs out there that are doing a good job, really tr truly prioritizing the resident experience. But on our end of it, we really pride ourselves on touching the soul of the resident. So once again, this only happens when you focus on the right, right things. So many programs have this, this desire to keep a resident busy. So they think about their activities department as like, look at all the stuff on our calendar. Look how many people attend bingo. Look, we packed the house for this event. But residents have more than just a need to attend events and go on outings. We as a company are in the business of senior connections, connecting people with others to their community, maybe even back to their family if there's a disconnect there, helping them find that sense of purpose. And then uh, you know, we really drive those, those the standards where we connect with those meaningful connections on a regular basis. So we we also, you know, one of the things I think that a lot of people forget about, you put on this great party, but then Mrs. Jones at the end of the hallway doesn't come to anything. Apologize if anybody listening's last name is Jones, not pointing you out, just using it as an example. But what about the person that doesn't come to things? So example, you know, John Smith mentions he has not had a root beer float in years during a conversation. So we put on a root beer float bar. John Smith, might, his name might not even be on the calendar, root beer float bar starring John Smith. But did we take the root beer float down the hallway to the people that didn't come to the event? Now, obviously, this drives the behavior of people staying in their apartments, but there's also ways around that as well. But what about an active or an entertainer? You know, what if we stop them five minutes early or 10 minutes early or we extend their time from that 50 minute slot or that one hour slot and they go down the hallway to some of the residents that really don't come to things that are in there and they're content with that? How about we have them sing, you know, on some of the branches of the hallways and, and try to connect with some of our residents that way? You know, it's it's thinking about the resident holistically, not only the people that come to things, the people that don't come to things and really just connecting others. Yeah, I think it's it's great to acknowledge and call out, right? Because I think to your point, see how many people show up at bingo, but or the other events that you have, and it's usually the same people that are coming out to them, but really just, you know, embracing those that might not want to come and understand why. And, you know, you had mentioned you're trying to touch the soul of the resident. It sounds like you're you're doing that in a few different ways, but how do you find is like the best way to go about that? You want to you want to play a game with me? Let's play a game. All right. So, I didn't I I didn't create what we're about to do. Um from what I gather, it's a woman named Carrie Duchess Langmeyer. Um and this was a way that she used to get to know her camp campers that were coming into her camp. Uh she called it the 5 H's, which was heritage, heroes, heartache, highlights and hopes. This is not anything that I'm not saying people should use this. What I'm saying is we're just going to play a game here. So what's your personal history? Like, what are some of the traditions your family celebrated? Are there any holidays that were really like big in your house? Um, big holidays. I would say Christmas was definitely a big one for us. Uh, you know, going to church, just being around family and, and all that sort of stuff. So that was definitely a big one for us. How about heroes? Heroes, I would have to say my dad is definitely one of them. And then uh, Cal Ripken. And uh, I'll have to go with Michael Scott from The Office, too. <laughs> Cal Ripken. What? So, I mean, just being from that area, I mean, he played the most games in a row, right? Like the most innings or something. He... I think he kind of plays off. So he was my dad's favorite player. And like, you know, I, I've, 
I put my dad on a pedestal at times. And, you know, we had a dog named Ripken growing up. And I think he was just one of those people, at least from my experience, you know, looking into it, which is someone who no matter what was going on, he still showed up. Right. And he just like continued to play and, you know, has that crazy record of so many games played straight. Yeah. Um, so I think that definitely, and that's just been my whole mentality. My entire life is like, you know, showing up as 80% of it and just like trying to make that happen day in and day out. Very cool. So the other three H's, so we did heritage, we did heroes, heartaches, highlights of your life and hopes, but let's just stick on the heroes for a second. Imagine if you will, if we were able to connect with somebody from the Baltimore organization, Imagine if we were able to connect to Cal Ripken himself and get him on a, a Zoom call with some other residents, you know, and we, we do like a Zoom with a dozen residents that are interested in baseball or interested in historical, you know, anything or interested in Cal Ripken. If you're in that area, you know, I'm, I would imagine anybody that moves into a senior community in the Baltimore area probably loves Cal Ripken. I would guess. Yeah. You know, that's when we talk about touching the soul of a resident, that's what I'm talking about is digging into the soul finding, making it intentional to find out really cool, intricate, you know, information about somebody. And now I put on the calendar, Cal Ripken discussion, you know, with Matt. And how special do you feel in that situation? How special yeah. do you feel when you know that we designed something just for you? You're going to go to your neighbors and you're going to be like, hey, come on, this thing we're doing is because I told them that I like Cal Ripken. And imagine if you show up and it's just a conversation, but all of a sudden we were able to get somebody that played with Cal or it is Cal himself on the screen or an author that wrote a book about Cal Ripken that joins us in person or, or, or via Zoom. Like going that mile to really dig into the, to dig into something that they just kind of told us. Yeah. You just kind of mentioned. So that's when we talk about digging into the soul of the resident or, you know, finding the soul of the resident it's really making what matters to them important. Uh, I, I jokingly tell this story from a long time ago. We had a resident whose daughter told us we were trying to, the daughter, the mom was kind of reclusive. She didn't really want to talk to money people. She had just moved in. The daughter said, you got to start a knitting group. She loves to sew. So we started a sewing group and mom didn't come. Mm -hmm. And so we go to mom and we go, hey, you know, we started this group. We thought you'd really like to come. And she's like, I don't like to sew, man. I, I sewed my kids buttons. I said, you know, I don't, I'm done with all that. So through multiple conversations, she started to tell us that her and her husband used to collect vintage cars. And so we turned it into, we said, can we go see them? And she started crying. And then we, we said, hey, can we take some other residents? She started crying even harder. And it was tears of joy. And so what we did was she had 30 cars in storage. And she knew the story of how they acquired every single one of them. And she thought that period of her life was over. Her husband was passed. That was kind of his thing. And every month we'd put it on the calendar to go look at one of her cars. And she would tell us a story of where it came from. And this, this doesn't happen by accident, man. It, it, it happens by sitting down with a resident, making them feel important in that moment and not putting a, a clock on it, you know, and us driving the behavior with our team saying, this is what's important to people is, is for you to connect with them, not just yeah. to put bingo on the calendar, and get them to come to bingo. Right. Wow. I love that. And yeah, as we're talking about like the event with Cal Ripken, I just even felt my soul be like lighter and excited and stuff. So I will expect that, uh, Curtis. So thank you for uh, coordinating that. Um, but, you know, I think another interesting side of the coin here is because, you know, you're doing all these awesome things for your residents and, you know, it's obvious to see all the good you're doing there. But how are you seeing this impact your your some of your frontline team or, you know, team that are working in these communities? Yeah, we live in a me, me, me world, man. It's, it's, we, we try to find, we, first off, we try to find people that support our 1440 mission. And a 1440 is how many minutes are in a day, uh, creating the absolute best experience with every person and every interaction, every minute of every day is our thing. And so as we hire people, we try to help them understand that they're here for a bigger purpose, you know, and I think everybody tries to do that. But we, I truly hope that when people, leave our organization that they feel that they're a better version of themselves. And that's done through consistent communication with them, consistent. Uh, we, we try to encourage the behavior of learning about the residents and, and connecting with the residents. And if they have good ideas, they're celebrated. Oh, Mrs. Jones, I, I just learned this about her. We should turn this into something. That's an awesome idea, Johnny. Like we should do, I agree with you. Johnny came up with this great idea, everybody. We should, we should try to put this into action. 
I want people to go on to the next chapter of their life, whether they're a college kid, you know, going to college from high school or whatever, saying, gosh, that was the best job I ever had, you know, because I got to touch people's lives at a time where they thought their families were going to abandon them or maybe it, I got to work with people that were inspiring to me that that helped me find a better version of me, regardless of the outcome. It, it's pervasive through our organization. It's, it, you know, it's, it's not just drinking the Kool-Aid. It's, it's, and once people get on board with that, that 1440 is a real thing in our company, we truly believe that they become better, better versions of themselves through the process. You know, so when you're saying how, do, how does it impact the team, I hope they move on to their next job and find if they move on to their next job, because we have lots of opportunity within our for growth. But if they move on to their next job, it's do they truly take into account the other person they're talking to and listen for things that they can kind of draw out of them so they can ask more questions to the person and not just answer the question. And that was, that's it. What's your favorite vacation you've been on? Florida. How about you? What's your favorite vacation you've ever been on? <laughs> you know, like, let's just reverse the question. You know, let's make other people feel important. I just love all the the great themes. I think you guys just have from from what it seems like just awesome communication across the board. And I think that's that's pivotal pivotal in terms of a successful community, right? It's better understanding one another and just help setting each other up for success. And to your point of like helping people find their best versions of themselves. I mean, that's that's why we're all living, right? To begin with. And it's just great that you guys are highlighting that. And you know, one of the, my final question here, and usually my my favorite question to ask people, Curtis, but if you could give the senior living industry just three guiding principles as they think through the next 12 to 18 months, what would you say? Yeah, so I I, I call this impact than marketing. So I always think about it from the perspective of is what we're doing impacting the resident? And then are we going to market the heck out of it? Are we proud enough of it to market the heck out of it? If you ever do something where you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to get us so many views, you've already lost. Because if there's no impact behind it, then it really shouldn't happen in the first place. What I Have you ever heard somebody like jokingly say like, oh, I forgot to check in at the gym, so I didn't go. You know, nobody knows I went, you know, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. about yeah. that? The same thing happens in some level. Families are, are trusting their loved one with us. And then they have to go put their head on their pillow at the end of the night. So one way to reinforce the positive peace of mind with the family is to ensure that families see the things that we're doing. So let's do impactful things. If Mrs. Smith says that she, she really wants to do X and we do that with Mrs. Smith, let's make sure her family knows it. Let's make sure her family knows it's on the calendar. Let's make sure the family sees pictures of it. So it's in, in, in make sure that it looks good. I think that's one of the other pieces is sometimes we see there's an opportunity for our photos to be a little bit better at times. <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to post a resident in their worst phase. You want to post a resident as they present well in that situation. So once again, it's, are you proud to market what, what you're marketing or what you're doing? So of the things you are doing, are the pictures you're posting representing the resident in the best light possible with where they're at? So that would be my first main one is really going to drive this impact find it out, find the soul of the resident, find the information that helps you create a calendar, which my goal is to create like a 75% a calendar of 75% things that we have gone door to door, created meaningful connections with residents, pulled something out of their soul and created something on our calendar for that. And then the next piece I would say, so, and then make sure when you execute those things that you're marketing them very well, that you have a plan to market those things very well. And then the, the additional thing is embrace, embrace new technology, whether that be ever sound or something else. Um, you know, the example I use is TikTok. If people are anti TikTok, just stay with me for a second here. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about posting seven times a day on TikTok or something like that. Now, first off, that's a lot of good. If, if you somehow have that much good content to post, for sure, post it. But we're just trying to get our teams to understand how it benefits the community and how it benefits the resident. So people that are listening, if, if you've seen the people getting pulled on the indoor inner tubes, uh, that got almost 15 million plus views. That was a big one. Uh, there was another one with the money shooter where they were shooting money. That was at our Waukee community with, with Austin. Uh, we are blessed to have quite a few videos that have hit a few million views, if not hundreds of thousands. Um, and when I say a few, I'm talking probably 30, 40 videos plus. Wow. 
Now, I saw in the comments one day, somebody said elder abuse. It's not elder abuse when the residents have a reason why they're doing it. The people that are partaking in these videos, we don't shroud what this is for. They're looking for, at this as a way to connect to their grandkids. They're looking at it as a way to do something that the young kids are doing and that it keeps them feeling young and fresh and cool. There's no secret behind this. You know, there's nothing, th these residents want to do these things. It's a new way, new outlet for them. And we just have to humanize it, you know? So the reason I say embrace things like TikTok is people are scrolling through these things, you know, and, and people, you, what happens is a lot of times people, people will go, my residents don't use TikTok. My residents don't use Facebook. Your residents may not, but the future residents do mm -hmm. and the future family members do. And the age of people using TikTok is continuing to get wider and wider. And so your future employees do. So when they see the video that's going viral and they're like, man, look at that cool stuff that's happening at that place that, you know, or you guys are that place. I want to work here. It's helping with recruiting. It's helping with families that are moving their loved one. And this is the cool stuff they, they get to do at our communities. So I encourage each and every one of you embrace it, man. Like it, it's, it's not going away. And it, it's, it's easy for us to say that. And I would question, why are you so resistant to it? There's got to be a nugget in there that you can embrace and find a cool way to do something. And once again, for us, the, the angle was, let's try to find a way to connect them to their grandkids, help them connect with that, that youthful audience, you know, that their, their family, their friends that are starting to use that. So that's what I would say. Yeah. I love it. Well, Curtis, I think you've set a record for me of the number of head nods that I had throughout this. I just uh, love what you're you're all about. I love what StoryPoint is doing. And, you know, I think one of those things with TikToks too, like, you know, it's definitely good on the marketing side, but I think you're also helping to change how our culture and our society looks at aging, right? And just like in senior living too, I think your, your earlier point, people kind of were stuck in this mindset of like the older nursing home and you guys are helping to change that narrative. So Thank you from uh, myself, from our team, and from the entire industry for all the awesome stuff that you guys are doing. Yeah, thank you for all you're doing, Matt. I appreciate it.